You just tuned in to the Tiger Toledo Show. This shit right here, Nick. Your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, and you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best, you heard? So, quick announcement. Uh, if you guys would like to book a strategy call with me, I now have openings on my calendar to speak to you personally to help you with your business venture. You can go to TigerToledo.com. Look for the banner that says book a strategy call or book a discovery call. And then just follow the link and then book your time. Today we're going to be talking about hot button. What is a hot button? Uh, I remember when I was working at Valley Total Fitness, right? They would always emphasize on this hot button thing. And basically what the hot button was, was the underlining motivation of why a person was taking action and why they were taking action at that moment. We all have a hot button. We all have this deep layered, I guess like it's like a diamond that just pushes us to do things that is out of the norm or even put up with a lot of pain, suffering, and struggle in order to get to that goal. When I do uh, discovery calls, right, with notaries, I tend to position the call like a young child because kids are probably the best closers on the planet. They will close you on any deal. But one of the things that kids tend to do, which can get annoying to adults, right? But it's highly effective and it, it uncovers hidden motivations. What is that thing that kids do? They ask why. Why are you doing this? And then you give them an answer. Then they ask you why. You give them another answer. Now they're uncovering things. Why? So for us as adults, hearing a person say why over and over and over again, it gets to feel uncomfortable. Because we are very aware of what's happening. So skilled elite performers know how to reframe the word why. I'll give you an example. A person comes into the health club and they say, I want to lose 10 pounds. Why is it important for you to lose 10 pounds? Well, because I feel like I'm putting on a lot of weight and I'm, I'm just not, you know, I don't feel like myself. Why is it important for you to feel like yourself again? Well, I have kids now and, you know, it's hard to go out there. My energy level is shot. Okay. And... If you got your energy level up again and you were able to lose weight, what would that mean to you? Oh, then I would be able to do more, take them to places, um, you know, the museum, uh, take them jogging, play sports with them. And why is that important for you to play sports and do all these things with your kids? Because I want them to have exposure to things that I didn't have. Aha! That is the hot button. It takes takes a while because people tend to suppress these, these, these motivations because people look at them funny. People have criticized them over time. Um, And like anything else, if, if you were to they did a study, right, of a, it was a case study about a man that went to work and 
what they were supposed to do was all of the co-workers were supposed to tell this co-worker that he looks sick. Okay? Although he was not sick. Now, this is the power of influence. And this is why it's so important that you surround yourself around strong people that can help you get to that next level. So there, everyone in the office, as soon as he walks through the door, one of the co-workers walk up to him and say, hey, John, how's it going, man? Oh, things are going great. He's like, hey, John, are you okay? You look a little sick. He's like, no, I feel great. No, I'm, I'm good. Oh, okay. All right. Talk to you later. John goes upstairs, meets with another co-worker. Hey, what's up, John? Damn, dude, you're, <laughs> are you okay? It looked like you're coming down with something. No, I'm, I'm fine. Why is everybody saying that? Oh, okay. Well, if you're feeling fine, that's cool. Goes into the break area. This is a true case study. Goes into the break area, goes to gra grab some water before he starts to shift. Another co-worker meets him at the water cooler. John, you, you're looking bad, man. You should have called off today. Really? Now, John is like, now he's questioning himself. He's like, damn, am I sick? Really? Like, should I have uh, called off today? Like, look, what's going on? Now, this continues for about maybe two, three more people. By the, by the, by the about noon, John is asking his boss, can he take off for the rest of the day because he's not feeling well? This is the power of influence with that. Asking why uncovers the same thing. See, so over time, people will suppress your true desires. Maybe because they can't achieve those, those goals. Maybe... You're holding that mirror in front of them to be like, hey, what are you doing with your life? Whatever the case is, people that see you being ambitious, if they're not on the same wavelength, they will suppress it. They will try to push it down. That's just a human nature. Kids do it all the time. Let a kid... Let there be two kids, and then one gets a toy, the other one doesn't. Someone's going to pitch a fit, and the other one is probably going to try to take the toy from the other. That's how you must protect your dreams. So this hot button gets suppressed so low that you must uncover it. What does that look like for the notary business? I'll give you an example for the notary business. Now, it's a little bit easier because a lot of people are already in pain. And when they're calling you, they're really ready to vent because they have already talked to a lot of family members. They probably talked to an attorney or two. Um, they're ready to vent. So when I usually take phone calls, I always ask the client, Tell me about your situation. What's going on? I'm looking for the hot button. What's going on? Why is it that you need a power of attorney now? And what usually comes out, well, not all the time, but every situation is different, right? But they'll say something like, my mom just had a stroke paralyzed on her left side she can't she, at this moment she is bedridden and she can't get in and out of the house the house and when we try to take her to the bank to take care of her financial affairs it's a huge ordeal so my mom decided to make me the power of attorney for her financial affairs you, you, you see where that comes. We're not order takers. You have to consult these people. These are human beings. Don't treat them like they're just a piece of meat. Or they're just an a, a ATM that you could just withdraw money out of. 
We want to help them at the highest, at our highest capability possible. We want to bring the fire. So once you uncover this hot button, say, oh, okay. And you continue to let them talk. Let them talk. Why are you so eager to talk? Why are you so eager to cut them off? Let them talk. So as the customer continues to talk, they, you find out that because mom hasn't been able to go to the bank, she's fell behind on her mortgage. And now she's starting to get foreclosure letters. Aha. Hot button. They're, they're on the verge of losing their childhood home. The house that they grew up in and raised the kids in. That is the underlining hot button. When you discover that, now you are more equipped to create value out of thin air. Because instead of you taking that phone call and you're like, hey, look, what do you need to do? You need to get a power of attorney? Yeah, we do that. Uh, It's going to be X amount of dollars. How much value did you create there? That's like a person going to McDonald's and saying, I want to fillet a fish. Okay, that'll be $7.89. What's the difference between you and a McDonald's cashier? You see, when people go out and they purchase Rolex watches, For one, they change the name. They don't really call them watches. They call them timepieces. Okay. And when you sit down and you talk to a person, the good ones now, they're going to consult you to understand why do you want a Rolex watch? What do you, what is the general purpose or what is the purpose of you getting this watch? Is it for casual? Is it more formal? Do you plan to wear this every day? Do you play sports? Let's look at the band that you're going to have around this timepiece. Do you run? Do you plan on running with this? Do you find yourself hitting walls? You know, like like you bump your wrist into walls and stuff like that. Like they consult you because you're making an investment of Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on this timepiece. You have to approach your business the same way. When you get a phone call from a potential client, that is an honor. You should be giving that person your undivided attention. You need to treat them like they are the most important person you're going to meet that day. I do that with 90% of my clients minus the 10% when I'm around my kids or I'm in a noisy area. But I always try to find a place quiet so I can give that person individual attention on that phone. That's how you have to treat your clients. When you talk to them, you want to control the conversation. But at the same time, you want to listen more than you speak. I hear notaries interrogating their clients. They're, they're, they're spewing law at them knowing that they're not lawyers, but they're just spewing law. Well, in the state of, well, that's just illegal. 
I can't provide this because the laws. There are workaround. See that what that is? That's an easy cop out. Because there's ways to work around anything. I listened to my buddy Tech. He was on somebody's show the other day. Um, and he was talking about, you know, document liaison, right? And then they kind of shot down the whole document liaison thing. But basically document creation, having preparing the documents for clients, right? Now, uh, the state law says that you cannot notarize the documents that you provided for the client. But there's a million other ways that you can still provide value to that client, though. And it doesn't say that you have to be a lawyer. People that prepare, that get documents from LegalZoom or eForms or Rocket Lawyer, are they attorneys? My, my, my 10 year old son can prepare a document on Rocket Lawyer. Does that make him an attorney? But it's binding in court, isn't it? If both parties sign and it gets notarized. Instead of you're approaching a situation and saying, I can't do this. Try to find ways that you can do it. It starts to train your mind to look for opportunities and options. Instead of, I can't do this. I can't do that. Uh, state law pro prohibits that. There's ways around everything. There's always more than one way to skin a cat. But you shoot yourself down. You shoot your business in the foot because you're not willing to take the time out to find solutions to problems. You know, the best entrepreneurs, the top entrepreneurs, the ones that make the most money are the ones that concentrate on problems and they concentrate on solutions to those problems. You got to be able to think quickly on your feet. You have to be attentive. That's why I always chuckle when I hear notaries um, or entrepreneurs rushing clients over the phone as if they got something to do. Somebody asked me, uh, how long do you stay on the phone with a potential client? I say as long as it takes for me to close the deal. There is no set time. There is no, oh, I closed this deal in five minutes. Okay. Some might happen in five minutes. Some might take an hour. So discovering what the hot button is comes from asking the right questions. Go to TigerToledo.com for more resources. There's a lot of work that needs to get done. This industry, I'm an entrepreneur first and foremost, but I've noticed that there is a huge gap in this notary industry. And so I I've taken it upon myself, throw it on my back, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try to help as many notaries, notary entrepreneurs as possible. And I understand why notaries do not have the proper skills to execute 
on their business. Now, business formation, in my opinion, that's that's pretty easy. Heck, you could pay a company to do that. Printing out flyers and uh, that takes some skills. That that does take some skills. You know, to, to print out the right flyers that have a conversion, a high conversion rate, yes, that takes skills. But anybody could just jump on Canva and just smack something together. But it takes some skills to design something effective. But when you become a notary or you become an entrepreneur, there are certain skills that you must seek out from mentors or business coaches. Unless you already possess those skills, sales is number one. If you are an entrepreneur, your number one goal is to make a profit. Not administration, not operations, not even finances. Your goal is to close deals. At this day and age, at 2023, Those that refuse to learn sales, may you die quickly. May your business die quickly so you could get the hell out of the way. I'm tired of hearing these crybabies. I, I, I tried to, to uh, show understanding, show some empathy. And like sales, and it's so icky. Then your ass don't want to be in business. You don't want to be in business. Move out of the way for somebody that is willing to learn this skill. Steve Jobs. Salesman. Microsoft, Bill Gates, early years. Salesman. Huh? Mark Zuckerberg. Salesman. Warren Buffett, hell of a salesman. Diddy, salesman. Jay Z, salesman. Byron Allen, salesman. I like it's, it's, clearly in front of you every top performer even media not even mediocre but i'm gonna say like mid-level performers they all understand that they must understand sales sales is psychology sales and marketing is psychology Myron Golden said something really interesting. He said, some of the greatest things that you, greatest joys that you have in your life came from a salesperson. Whether you like it or not. That first house that you bought, somebody sold you that house. That car that you love washing every Thursday and getting a wax job and everything, a salesperson sold you that car. That watch that you have, that purse that you that you rock, you having the job that you have right now, you sold that employer to hire you. Stop running away from sales. Learn it, master it, and then move on to the next high income skill. Sales and marketing is the number one skill you must learn in any business. Otherwise, do not take the entrepreneur pill. Leave the pill on the table and walk away. Walk away. This ain't for you.
Go to TigerToledo.com for more resources. You know what the Notary Cash Flow Academy is? The Notary Cash Flow Academy was initially designed as a sales course. It was called Vector Sales Academy. I was teaching. Here, here, here's the funny thing. When I first started teaching about sales, I was actually teaching customers how to prepare themselves and how to be able to negotiate with salespeople because I knew that salespeople had this weapon, right? They had, they were weaponized. They had an artillery of skills that the average person didn't know about. So I found myself trying to educate consumers on how to be aware of certain type of sales techniques that are being used against them every single day. Now, guess what happened? The people that started purchasing my course were actual salespeople, not the consumers. They were like, hey, look, <laughs> we want to be better at sales. Teach us more on how to be better at sales. So I had to make that pivot from teaching the consumer to teaching the actual sales professionals. So that started to move upward. Then I decided to narrow my focus a little bit more. Let me tell you something. Magic happens when you narrow your focus. I'm a notary professional, a notary entrepreneur. I have a notary agency. I'm noticing a huge void in the market, huge void. Now I took it upon myself to fill those buckets up myself. What did those buckets look like? Well, when I went to Amazon.com and I wanted to seek books on being a notary, I actually wanted to find a book from a melanated person that speak my language, that 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 moved the way I moved, that understands the 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 situations that we come from. I wanted it, I wanted a person that was relatable. To me as a black man. And I found zero books. Zero. And I I, and I looked at the history of notary and this shit's been around for hundreds of years. This notary public thing is not a new industry. It's been around for over a hundred years. So I'm like, wait a minute. This profession been around for so long and there's not one book with a black person speaking about how to succeed in the notary business. Okay, there's a void. There's a there's an empty bucket here. Let me fill it up. So I created Rise of the Smart Notary. First book took off. Straight up took off. Fucking New York Times need to be calling me and saying your shit is a New York Times bestseller. It took off. Black men and black women from all around the United States, including other countries, shout out to Brazil, were purchasing this book. I said, okay. I hired a mentor. Shout out to Ja War. That's what I'm telling you, man. Y'all want to learn some shit, man. Get a mentor. Stop. I like you can figure it out yourself, but it's going to take you a while. Well, I ain't trying to, be, you know, I'm trying to get rich quick. There ain't nothing wrong with getting rich quick. But there is a problem with dying broke slow. So I seeked out a mentor. I bought a course, right? 
Shout out to the Kendall Cashflow family. It took, listen, I wanted to write a book for over 20 years. I bought that course, Kendall Cashflow. I started churning out books left and right. I was, I was writing 20 books a year. Oh, yeah, it was serious. That's, that's the power of having a mentor. So I wind up hiring this private coach uh, by the name of Ja War. And I told him a little bit about what my, my success is with Rise of the Smart Notary book, which you guys can get on Amazon right now. If you don't have it, you should have it. And he said, if you have seen success, this much success with your f- first book, you need to create a series. I never even thought about that. So that's where Rise of the Smart Notary 2 came up. Evolution. Then Rise of the Smart Notary 3 came out. And still I stand. Shout out to Nina Simone. I'm sorry, not Nina Simone. uh, Anglo. I can't even remember her name. But y'all know who I'm talking about. And still I stand. And those books started to take off. Now, I'm filling the bucket. I'm filling the void. You understand what? I'm, this is coming full circle now. I'm filling the void. Instead of me complaining that there's not, there isn't any books, and I can't read any books on the notary subject coming from a person like me, if you feel so strongly about something, you go out there and do something about it. So instead of me sitting around and complaining that, man, there's no books with any black people writing about success in the notary business or how to approach the notary business. Instead of just sitting around and complaining about it, I took action and I executed on it. And it has opened up amazing doors for me. So now I start creating these series. There are empty buckets all over. I mean, like the notary industry and any profession. And this is any profession. There are there are empty buckets riddled all over every industry. There's more than you can count. Start finding this void. And start filling them up. There's profits in all of them. Most of them at least. Especially if there's huge big companies that are making hella bread in there. That means there's a lot of crumbs that they're leaving on the table. If there are people out there making millions, billions of dollars in your industry, I can guarantee you they're leaving crumbs on the table. And them crumbs could be pretty significant. Them crumbs could be six-figure months. So, I noticed there wasn't anything directed. Now, I'm, I'm talking about years back, right? I'm, run, I'm, I'm running it back now. I uh, the podcast is starting to hit the airwaves. There's Spotify and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, there's no, uh, there's no shows speaking on this notary thing. At least the ones that I can relate to. Something raw, something uncut. So I create a show called the Notary War Room. And I start inviting notaries to be on the platform. Filling the void. Filling the bucket. Okay. So now I'm looking at who are the top influencers in 
the notary industry. And I could only really find my find about a handful. Shout out to Andre Hatchett. But I'm talking of um I'm talking about like early days, right? So it was Andre Hatchett. There was Mark Wills. And that's it. And I had the choice of checking out Mark Wills or Andre Hatchett. I checked out both. And I gravitated more towards the brother that looks like me. I wanted to hear what this brother had to say. See, I'm not one of those people that believe the white man's ice is colder. I'm not that dude. I know the black ice is the most deadliest. So yeah, I gravitate towards that. When I go to the casino, I always bet on black. Yes, indeed. So I start learning from this brother and he's just giving me hella game. Which is guiding me in the right direction and it's exposing me to what this industry really is about. He says this one thing that I keep with me and I I hang on to this thing. He said, don't approach this business as a notary. Approach it as a business owner. That was a game changer for me. That one line alone was a game changer for me. So now, fast forward, I produce shows like Notary War Room, Rich Stamp, Poor Stamp, and even this show right here, the Tiger Toledo Show. I have it being distributed worldwide from iTunes to Ghana to the Middle East. The show gets distributed worldwide, self-contained. I own 100%. Then I start to create clothes in the notary industry. I start to produce run DMC notary shirts. That starts to sell. You see, these are the buckets. I'm, I'm trying to tell you there are buckets all over every industry that are not being met that does... It's like a wasteland. It's a graveyard of profit buckets. All it needs is somebody to dust it off and give it a little attention and pour a little water on it, clean it off, and then you start using it. Then I start creating books. Then Audible. Then I create an online course. Then I start doing master classes and webinars. Now, all of this is all inside of the notary industry. I'm, ha- I'm creating multiple streams of income in one industry. Then I go into email marketing. Now, did I start off with all of that stuff? Absolutely not. But you have to start stacking your skills. You have to start stacking high income skills. I start learning about copywriting. Shout out to Donnie Bryant, the Jay-Z of sales copy right there. Mentor and friend. I start understanding sim text marketing. Go to TigerToledo.com for more resources. So these things took time. It took effort. It took mentorship. It took purchasing courses. It took uh, getting coaching, one-on-one coaching, group coaching, however you want to do it. But if you have a goal and you know what you're trying to accomplish, 
Oh, yeah. So at this point, shout out to everybody that's been ho- a host. I have removed myself from the notary war room and I ask people that I admire and I and, and I I love what they do. I ask them to be guest host on the show now. And I get to be the Tyler Perry of the notary industry now. Shout out to Tech, who was a host. Shout out to Don Velez, who was a host. And now I'm getting Gina, my girl out there from the Boogie Down Bronx. She's going to be the host for the next episode. And shout out to all the guests that we've had. This entrepreneur business is not easy. But who wants the easy shit anyway all the damn time? Makes you weak. And then when somebody that is hungry pop up in the place, you scared to confront them. You scared to fight for what you've worked so hard for because it came so easy to you. And you lose your spot. Rightfully so. You better be a savage beast. Until then, my friends, peace, love, and happiness. I wish you guys the best. Go to TigerToledo.com. My schedule has opened up, so I am taking some discovery calls, and I can help you take your business to the next level. Peace.